It's a new Montgomery and Chipotle barbecue sauce. Make it a part of your home team. Available now at your neighborhood grocer or online at cincyfavorites.com. Music. All right, welcome back. We are live here at the Pierce Horton Center in the uh, radio booth, which serves as my office when we're not calling football games from here. Good to have you with us on the program, and uh, good to have our guest in studio with us. Nico Medved's basketball team is off to a 3-1 and one start in league play and uh, going to a... Uh, Face a Wofford team tomorrow night that, as uh, Nico told me on a couple of occasions already this week, will be desperate for a win when the Paladins roll into town tomorrow. Yeah, you know, I, I hope both teams are, are desperate. I think we will. I think somebody told me that the last four times these teams have played, the game's been decided by by four points or less. And so... Um, Played two phenomenal games with them. Well, like I said, the last four have been phenomenal, but I expect nothing, uh, nothing less on Saturday. And we know we're going to get their best shot, and and uh, we definitely intend to give them ours. Yeah, if, if uh, history's any indication, that place is going to be packed. It's going to be loud. It's going to be a great atmosphere. And and I know uh, your view on it, same same as mine. If you're a college athlete, that's what you signed up for. You want to go into enemy territory, and you want to have them insulting you and and yelling and screaming and making all the noise they can that's what you live for without question like i i prefer when there's a big crowd and they're hostile and i think that's part of the uh, uh, uh the fun of it and the adrenaline and i'd expect it's the last game and 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 the benjo uh, uh next year they'll move into their new facility and so i think it would be a great way to uh to go out there and in style but um you know they're a heck of a program they're well coached uh, they'll be ready and, and i think we'll be ready and it should be a great game what, what have you seen from, from Wofford scouting? I know we talked a little bit about it Monday. They're going to do what they do. Personnel's a little bit different, uh, but they still have Eric Garcia, who's been around forever. They've got Fletcher McGee, who's now a sophomore and is an incredible shooter. What, what are you seeing from them on film? Um, you know, I think Eric Garcia is playing as well as anyone in our conference right now. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm not probably exact on this, but over his last four or five games, he's averaging over 20 a game. He's a big shot maker, big shot taker, uh, um, just really, really playing at a high level. Uh, Fletcher McGee got off to a little bit of a slower start this year, but boy, he's really back on track. And so I think this team, they lost in overtime at Sanford. They lost in overtime at home to Siddle, but they're playing better and better. And uh, um, they still shoot the ball extremely well, maybe better than anyone in our league. Uh, um, so they have that ability to, you know, quickly, they can make four or five shots as, as, as fast as anyone in our conference. I think the other piece they have, uh, um, kid Ryan Sawvel for them, that was a transfer, kind of got his feet underneath him. He's really shooting the ball well from the post spot, the, from the four spot. They really hadn't had that before. Um, so that just creates a little bit more spacing in their offense. And young kid Cameron Jackson is a big kid that's starting to come along and provide a little bit of block presence and scoring. And, you know, they have another senior, Jalen Allen, uh, who will start at the three for them who, you know, he he's shooting over 40% from three. Uh, he can make shots. They got a lot of guys who can make shots. I think what's different about them, maybe like us, um, they're a little bit younger off the bench maybe than they've been. They're playing yeah. some younger guys um, off the bench and don't have quite as much experience that way. Um, but, hey, um, when I watch them on film, uh, they look like the same old Wofford to me. <laughs> You know, it's interesting how that works, and that just goes to show the, the system that Mike has been able to, to develop there. It's the same thing you're trying to develop here. You know, four years from now, you want people to look at, at Furman and say, regardless of the personnel, this is who they are and this is what they do. Oh, with, with, without question. And, you know, your, your culture, how hard you play, I mean, all those kinds of things. And, and, and with the expectation that, man, every time you, you strap it up to play firm and you're going to have to bring your best because they're going to bring their best. And I think that's what everyone strives, strives for. And, you know, we're, we're moving in that direction. And, and it's been a good start so far to conference play, you know, bumping the road at Chattanooga, but they're a terrific team. Uh, we won't be the last team that will go in there yeah. and lose and, you know, have a tremendous challenge on Saturday, but, but hopefully we can find a way to get, uh, get back on track and as you know uh road wins are like gold absolutely um you know in a lot of ways in the chattanooga game i thought that that the mocks showed why they were the number one 
preseason pick by both the media and the coaches. I, you know, they've, they've got basically every piece of the puzzle. But even at that, and, and the 16-point differential, I think, is a little deceiving because it, it was a much closer game uh, really until the end. And you said in the post game that you thought your kids maybe were, I don't know if you used the word tentative or, or weren't as aggressive maybe as they normally would be against uh, against an opponent. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's funny. Every game you play is a little bit different. You could tell defensively they were making a concerted effort to not allow us to shoot threes. They really wanted us to get to the paint. We shot more shots in the rack zone, we call it, in the paint than we have all year. And I, I just thought we had a lot of opportunities. Um, we would drive it in there. We kind of get it stripped. We kind of get it stripped or missed. You know, we, we didn't get ourselves to the free throw line. Some of that's a credit to them, but I think we needed to play a lot stronger and more aggressive. Maybe we respected their ability to block shots a little too much, mm-hmm. um, even though you know they're 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 terrific at it and, and they're like you said they're at where they are for a reason. But I thought we could have been a little bit better that way and more aggressive. And then on the same and the same token, uh, they're a difficult team to defend when they're making threes. Uh, um, they're not a great three-point shooting team percentage-wise. They shot it well that game. Some of that was our defense, too. I thought we could have been a little bit more aggressive on on, on both ends. But, hey, listen, I mean, it, we, we had the lead in the second half late. They pulled away uh, um, from us. But, um, hey, we've just got to respond. they got to come back to our place at some point here in, in February, and, and hopefully we'll have a better performance. Well, uh, you know, history says you will. You, the, these two teams have split the last four games you've played going back to two years ago to the conference tournament. So it, it's been a, uh, um, uh, a a series that has been played on, on somewhat equal footing regardless of, of where the teams have been ranked. But in, And that's good to see. It, it just can, shows the continued growth of, of your club. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think our kids – they know, uh, they believe they can win. They, they know they can. They, they know what it takes. And um, just look at, I mean, look at our conference. Look at all these conferences around the country right now. Uh, um, every night out is going to be a war. No, I mean, Greensboro goes and wins uh, at East Tennessee State last night. Uh, um, it's going to be a war every night. And, and so our kids definitely believe that they're in the mix and, and that we have a, ha, have a game and a style and, and, and a depth of talent that can compete every night out. And so – this team has shown when they go down, they find a way to respond, and we, and we will. You know, you know, looking at the league, um, Greensboro now has beaten both Chattanooga and ETSU, the two teams who were in the conference championship game a year ago, and have been significantly more consistent than at any time since I've been in the league, and I'm in my sixth year here. And, and it just goes to what we were talking about one day last week the depth of this conference right now is as good as it's been in a long time. And then Sanford went up and won at Greensboro, you know, yeah. and, and, and so th- there is no question about it. And I said that from the beginning and, and uh, uh, the depth of, of this league is by far the best that it's ever been. And, you know, um, you've got your work cut out for us. And, you know, we feel like we're one of those teams, you know, we know that we can get beat any night, but we know that we feel like we can win any night. And, and uh, you just got to be ready to strap it on. And like I told our team yesterday, there's only 14 games left and we have to find a way to, to to no complacency, but find a way to continue to get better and better. How can yeah. you continue to improve? And the teams that do that uh, uh, will be there at the end. And that doesn't mean you're going to go 14 and 0, right? And keep, but you've got to find a way to keep improving, keep getting better, uh, uh, stay hungry. And, and and if we do that, I, I I feel like this team will be there at the end. This is, of course, uh, Furman head coach Nico Medved is our high tech graphics folks of. Uh, alerted you to the the um, the growth of the program for for those of us who have been around since you got here it's just been so so fun and, and interesting to watch because you, you get here obviously you you were brought in for a reason struggling in, in just about every facet of the game then you start to put some things together you start to become a better home team and of course we run the table last year in the conference at home and still riding, I think, a 10-game winning streak. I think it's 11. Is it 11 now? Yeah. Okay. Don't but short me, Dan. I'm, I'm trying. I'm just Sorry. kidding. Don't short <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, do what you have to do. I'm, yeah. um, but and, – and, and I know the, the mantra, again, this year was to be a better road team, and you've got five true road wins, uh, which is more than you've had uh, in, in any, any uh, juncture of your tenure so far. And, and, and you say 14 games to go chance to add to that and if you're going to 
be in that you know that top four seeding. You're going to have to get some more road wins along the way. But this program is moving in that direction. Yeah, I mean that that's our goal and goals to win every game. And 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 boy, it's a it's a feat. Like I said, I, I do think it's been 11 straight conference games, but. You know, again, you're seeing people go on the road and win. I mean, they're winning at home, and and uh, but but we are. We've been a better road team. We've been a much more consistent team, I think, uh, um, from beginning to end. But but boy, you just start looking at it. Every night's going to be a challenge, and and uh, I think our kids have confidence they can go anywhere and be successful. But um, you know, boy, I I uh, I hope we can. That would be an amazing feat to to run the table at home again. I don't know who's the last team to to do that, but. You know, the cliche, first things first, and this is uh, uh, um, playing Wofford at Wofford. It's a huge game. It's one game. It's one of 14. But, you know, for all of our kids, and I'm sure for them, you know, there's always a little bit of extra yeah. extra meaning in that game, and it's turned into a nice rivalry. Teams really respect each other and want to win, and so so that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, and that, that's that's obviously what what's lying ahead, but as – we we continue to talk about the big picture. You know, when I first got here, this team would go on the road and get beat by 25, 30 points. The 16-point loss at Chattanooga on Saturday was the first time in over a year you've lost by double digits to anybody, yeah. I believe, home or away. And the first time in two seasons you'd lost by 16 points. I mean, that's a that's a pretty impressive run for your club. Yeah, I, I think so. And it's, it's funny, like, when you're – sitting where I am, you don't even notice that. You know yeah. what I mean? You're just trying to, to plug away and to, and to get better. And, and, uh, um, but that is interesting. I think that does speak to the growth of our, of, of our program. And the reality of it is you want to, I mean, our goal is to be the best team in the conference, but what you really need to do is you need to consistently have a program where year in and year out, you're putting yourselves, like you said, in that position towards the top of your league where you are ready when you go into that tournament in Asheville in March, you've got a team and you've got a seed that's good enough to win it. And that's your goal, to be playing your best, to put yourself in position, seeding wise where you can go up there and have a chance to win it all and go to the NCAA tournament. And you know what? The last two years we've done that. The first, you know, two years ago, nobody expected it. Right. But last year we did. And, you know, we got beat in the in, in the semis, but nothing changes. It's to try to win every game and, and to keep getting better and put ourselves in a position where we go up to that conference tournament at the end of the year that we got a chance to do it yeah you certainly don't want, want to make a habit of having to win the play-in no, game you can't do that um top four finishes are nice because you get the bye and that mm -hmm. i think that's pretty much the goal every season am i right yeah and actually to be honest now it's the top six so so oh, right. so so that the top six actually get a bye because then the bottom four you know play that play-in game mm -hmm. which then becomes an eight-team tournament um, but but you got to get a get a seed where you give yourselves a chance to win and it's going to be a wild tournament I mean there's so many teams that have already proven that are going to have a chance to win it at the end of the year and so who's playing their best who's staying healthy who's continuing to get better uh, um, who's hot at the right time and uh, um, we intend or, or hope that that's going to be us how much league watching do you allow yourself to do in season, I know you're focused on Wofford right now, yeah. but how much do you allow yourself to watch what else is going on around the league? I we do. It's you know, last night I watched the uh, ETSU Greensboro game a little bit. The other night I watched uh, uh, um, Sanford. I mean, I, I I watch the other games when I can. Um, obviously, I watch us. I try to watch a little bit of some of the other teams around the country of, of people that I like and respect. But I still, as best I can. I try to focus on us. I, I try to make sure that I watch practice. You know, I watch all the live segments from practice. I try to watch us and, you know, what are we doing and, and to continue to try to figure out where we don't have slippage in our own execution. Mm -hmm. And because at the end of the day, it does matter. You have to do things uh, to your opponents and understand who you're playing and the different styles. But still, it comes down to, to, to you. What do you do well? Are you executing the things that you work on every day in practice? And um, I've tried to do that, and I still, uh, uh, to this day, and I'll always believe that, that that's the most important thing. When did it become a uh, standard practice to film, start filming everything that happened in practice? Were you doing that when you first got into coaching? Um, yeah, it, 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 it maybe wasn't as uh, um, um, prevalent when I first got into coaching. I mean, you had the old, you know, VCRs and, <laughs> you know, and all that stuff like that. And now it's just it's so easy and you load everything onto your laptop and you can cut it. But 
but boy, ever since I can can remember, I mean that that started to 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 be the practice is to film everything, and um, I, that's what I like. I said that's what I try to do is to just make sure you watch all the live segments um, um, from practice for sure, and be able to watch what you're doing, and and that becomes my primary focus. And you've got a lot of different mentors and in, in practice, and one of mine is is Dick Bennett, you know, who mm-hmm. who was coach was kind of sons Tony's a coach at Virginia, and. You know, we talk quite regularly, and and you know, he was a guy when he coached. He rarely spent any time watching his opponents. I mean, he he didn't do that because he'd say, I, I'd stay up at night thinking, my these opponents are so good. How and I just, <laughs> you know, what what he just tried to believe that hey, what we do if we do it really really well, it's going to be you know enough to give ourselves a chance. And I mean, he was one I always just spent way more time focusing on himself and and watching practice continuing to harp on his own execution of the things that they emphasize. And um, I've really tried to carry that in, into my career. I know I, I watch a lot of opponent stuff and mm-hmm. we do that, but, but I, I, I think that's a good uh, uh, thing to think about. We can get so caught up in what everybody else is doing and we kind of let our own uh, bed get messy a right. little bit. Well, what do you always tell me when we start talking about scouting and you always come back to ultimately it's about us? Yeah. And it sounds like, oh, every coach says that and everything, but, but it is. And I I don't, it's no different than any of the other coaches in our league. Yes. Are they going to look at what we do and try to take some of our players and and make them do something they don't want to do? They're going to scout our, our out of bounds plays and our half court sets. And they're going to do all that stuff just like we do. Um, But at the same point in time, I know every one of those coaches is going over there and they're trying to do what they do better. We go over to play Waffle. I mean, we know what's coming, but we can go and we can walk through their actions. We can try to scout it live, but it's what they've practiced every day. And some of those kids for four years. So um, they believe, hey, if we execute it sharper and screen better and Carter, we're going to be able to execute. And I know that's how they feel. And that's the same way I feel about us. And um, so I I don't think that's anything new uh, um, uh, about the good programs. Got a uh, a comment from Mark here on our Facebook feed. It says this Furman team seems to be much more balanced than those in the past. And you, Coach Medved, did a great job adjusting to Stephen Kroon's departure. It says keep up the good work. Well, I I appreciate that, and and you know we felt I know as a staff, and it'd be funny Stephen would tell you that, and other seniors, you know I remember Stephen laughed, and he's like, oh, Coach, I I think you guys are going to be better next year. You know, I mean he he could see it and. We felt like we had a lot of guys who would continue to get better, and as roles change, you know, uh, uh, underclassmen become upperclassmen, and guys that were capable of, of of more, and that's what's happening. And the same thing with our young guys. I think that people are always surprised. They they you know they focus on the the teams like Duke and North Carolina who have these NBA players, and and they assume. Uh, what a kid is as a freshman or sophomore is what he's going to be as a junior and senior. And, you know, at this level, when you have upperclassmen uh, uh, who've been through it and play, you got a chance to be good. And I really like our young kids and, and their yeah. roles are different this year, but, but the hope is, and the belief is wholeheartedly that as those guys become, you're going to say, Oh, wow, I, I didn't, boy, I didn't, I didn't realize that, you know, Trey Clark was capable of this or, or boy, Jordan Lyons. He's really, I can go on and on, you know, Jalen. And that's what's happening with our guys and Devin and Daniel and John Davis is really having a nice year for mm-hmm. us. And that's something that I think all of us expected. Well, and, and ultimately again, as we've talked a couple of times already this year, that's where you want this program to get to where your young kids don't have to come in and carry the load for you. Like, Devin and Jeff Beans and Daniel Fowler and John Davis the third did going back two years ago and all the minutes they logged as freshmen. Now we're seeing that manifest itself now into guys who don't get phased when adversity happens on the floor, but normally you don't like to put in that many minutes. No, and, and that's not a not to if you look at any program at our level, I'm taking out the the you know, the guys who have lottery picks but Anyone who's playing predominantly freshmen as their main players rival usually is struggling a little bit. Yeah. You know, the teams that have guys like ours and playing freshmen in roles uh, have a chance to be successful. And now the challenge for us as a program with some of these young guys, right, they're not getting to play as much as they have. And, and they have the challenge of trying to, st- to, to find a role on this team uh, um, to continue to adjust to minutes going up and down and mm-hmm. all that stuff like that. And that's a huge challenge for young guys and something we have to continue to talk about. And today's day and age, no one wants to, no one wants to do the process anymore. Everybody wants it right now, you know, and, and uh, to get guys to believe in that is so key and it's so rewarding to do and to stick through. And um, 
you know, the older guys, every one of these kids in our program, if they went back and looked at their freshman year when they were young players and can laugh about it now, but the ups and downs and the times where it was very, very difficult and felt like they couldn't do anything right and they were struggling. And uh, But boy, like you said, the, the fruits of your labor yeah. can pay off in a big way. Well, and, and, and even beyond that, I mean, you, you take a look at, at Jalen Williams, who redshirted last year, Clay Mounts, who's going through it this year. Again, these guys were stud guys at their high schools, and now they're being asked basically to put in all the work for a full season and not get any of the rewards that come in playing time for the betterment of themselves and the team down the road. For some kids, that's a hard pill to swallow. It's really hard, and that's the other thing. Young guys have they have they have no idea what they're getting themselves into when they come to this level. How hard it's going to be, how intense it's going to be, how fast it's going to move, and and, and they all like that. Hey, I just go back to Stephen Kroon, but I was talking to, to him the other day, and he's at was at his high school watching his high school. But they got a couple of Division One young kids, and I said, "How was practice?" He's like. Coaches, I mean, these kids, they don't have any idea. I mean, these guys are going out there. I'm trying to tell them, you know, like, you don't have any idea what's coming at the next level. You know, it's, it's, it's so hard. And there's a lot of guys who can – I said, well, you know, just – you can go down there and get in a couple of our freshman year and just, just remind them, you know, of just to, to stay with it, just like you did. And same thing with our older guys. But but that's exactly right. But it's nice. The flip side to that is, Dan, now when these young kids come into our program, they have older guys now who've been through it and have started to see some success. And even though it's harder in the short term, I think it helps their development in the long run because they see how it needs to be done and they're coming into a culture that's better and, and used to doing things the right way and that will help them grow at a faster rate. Yeah, cha changing the culture of any program I think is the hardest thing. To, if the culture is bad, changing the culture to a good culture is the most difficult thing to do in sports, I believe. Uh, w w without question. There's so many egos and different things and uh, going on, and it's the hardest thing to do, but by far the most important. Uh, um, it doesn't matter what you run on offense, what you do on defense, and uh, um, X's and O's are very overrated in that capacity I if your culture isn't right and you don't believe. and It's more about how you do things than what you do. And um, I know all the coaches say that, but it's it's very very difficult. And we've been fortunate. I've got a really good staff and and, and a good group of kids, and they've continued to fight and work through it. And, and I think that, you know, I, well, I mean, we did. I thought we we turned a corner, you know, last year mm -hmm. that way. And, and I think that we're continuing to do that. And you'll have your ups and downs, just like everybody does. But what we've shown is is that we can respond when things don't go our way, and, and that's and that's great to see. All right, Coach, uh, coming back full circles, we get set to wrap it up here, going on the road to Wofford tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. If, if we're going to get up there and, and sneak out of the Benjo with a win, what has to happen? Um, you know, on the defensive end, I think we're going to have to play with tremendous intensity. Um, we're going to have to find ways to, to contest the three-point shot. Uh, um, they're going to make some. That's what they do. But we've really got to make them work. Um, and then, you know, even though they're a great three-point shooting team, they do find a way to steal easy twos. You know, they, they execute, they'll get you for a back screen layup, uh, uh, um, um, a, a post basket. I mean, all those things. We've got to be really, really good defensively. And I think on offense, we've really got to stay aggressive. We've got to be on the attack. We've got to use our depth, um, our speed, our ability to get to the basket. Um, they have shown that they're a team that they, they foul uh, a little bit more at the rim, and we've got to find a way to get into the bonus, to stay aggressive. Um, to put the ball on the floor, not just settle uh, um, for the first available shot. And we've got to be really, really aggressive on the offensive end. And, you know, if we do that, uh, I think it's going to be a heck of a ball game. It could come down to rebounding, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, um, and, and if we do that, I, th I think we've got a real chance to go over there and get a win. But we're expecting a, a dogfight. And why wouldn't this game come yeah. down to the last four minutes? Rebounding and defense, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, and make a lot of shots, right? <laughs> make your free throws, it's, it's, make your shot, all those things. Sounds so easy. It sounds so easy. You do that, you're going to be successful. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Uh, that's Coach Nico Medved. If you missed part of this interview or you'd like to see it again, uh, it'll be available uh, via my social media and the school social media coming up uh, in the early part of the afternoon. But we thank Coach Nico Medved for joining us, and we'll see you at, um, at Wofford tomorrow. Thanks, Dan. We'll see you soon. All right. We will step out for a break and come back and put a wrap on today's show right after this. You're listening and watching the Dan Scott Show. Don't go away. Williams Hardware, and you'll know.